Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. And this is a problem that we've done before, similar problems we've done before, but this is kind of different. Why do you think it's different? Because we have an n, an integer in this case. Well, it doesn't have to be, but let's just say, pretend for now that it's an integer. And we're going to be solving for x. So it's kind of like a, an equation with a parameter where we can kind of play with the values of n that's going to give us a bunch of different solutions. Okay? So in other words, the value, the value of x kind of depends on the fixed value of n. Okay, so like I said earlier, we've done some similar problems and I've seen this on YouTube a lot. So problems like x to the power x cubed equals 3, x to the power x to the fifth equals 5 x to the power x squared equals 2. So you can do lots of lots of examples. In, instead of focusing on all these numerical cases, let's go ahead and look at a more general case. That's what I wanted to look at today. So we're going to look at this from a more general perspective. So let's go ahead and do the following. I would like to use substitution. It's going to simplify the process. Instead of dealing with a function like this, I'm going to simplify it. So let's go ahead and call this t. Any variable is fine, but I like t. Uh, I like coffee too, but t is better, I think. Anyways, so this means x to the nth power is t, which means x equals t to the power 1 over n, as long as n does not equal 0, as long as t does not equal 1, right? Okay, so we can basically make the replacement, replace x with t to the power 1 over n, and replace x to the n with t, and set it equal to n. It's... You can also raise both sides to the nth power. That's the more general method, which is pretty common. But I like to do it this way for two reasons. One, solution is easier. S two, uh, the function that we're going to be looking at is going to be easier to handle. Okay? T two reasons. So now uh, this becomes t to the power t over n equals n. And of course, you want to get rid of the n at the bottom. That's a fraction. That's not good. Let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power n. And this is the critical part, n cancels out, and we end up with t to the t equals n to the n. So notice that this means that t is a variable, n is a given number. So suppose n is equal to 5, then you would have t to the t equals 5 to the 5. If n is equal to 7, then you would have 7 to the 7, so on and so forth. So think about it as a given number for any fixed value this is going to give you basically a family of uh, solutions. That's what we're going to get. And obviously, from here, we could say that, hey, looks like t is equal to n, right? I mean, at least we can say that t equals n satisfies this equation, doesn't it? Okay. But the question is, and that's a million-dollar question, maybe a billion-dollar question, is that the only solution? So we're going to look at it from... Two perspectives. First of all, a, a little bit of calculus. Don't be scared. We're just going to take derivatives, make a table, look at the behavior, and then we're going to look at the graph of the function, and then we'll talk about it. Okay? All right, let's do it. Now, my function is a lot simpler now because I'm going to be looking at t to the power t. So suppose f of t equals t to the power t. Let's go ahead and differentiate this function, f prime. Now, how do you differentiate it, right? Well, you could write it as e to the ln t to the t, and then you can go ahead and bring the t to the front, and then differentiate like, differentiate, differentiate, uh, like an exponential function, or you can differentiate it differently, like this is usually the method that I follow. You can ln both sides, which is the same thing, by the way, but I just like it better, and then use properties of logs, move this to the front, and then just... Uh, Differentiate like this. Same thing, just same thing because if ln f of t is t ln t, then f of t is e to the power t ln t. Okay? But when you differentiate the left hand side, this is kind of like implicit differentiation, and we gotta use the chain rule. So ln of a function of t, not ln t. If you differentiate ln t with respect to t, you just get 1 over t. But if you differentiate ln f of t, you get the derivative of f by chain rule, divided by f of t. In other words, 1 over f of t, which comes from the derivative of ln, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Again, this is called the chain rule. Okay. Now, if you differentiate the right-hand side, it's product rule, the derivative of t times ln t, 
plus the derivative of ln t, we just talked about it, 1 over t, multiply by t, they cancel out and we end up with the following. If you cross multiply, you're going to multiply f of t, which is t to the t, multiply by ln t plus 1. And the next thing you should do is set the derivative equal to 0 to understand if we have any horizontal tangents. And horizontal tangents usually means what? Maxima or minima, right? So to understand which one is which, we do need to look at the second derivative, which I don't like, or the table. Table is better because second derivative could be misleading. Now think about a function like x to the power 5. You take the first derivative, set it equal to 0, you get x equals 0. And then you take the second derivative, and then you set it equal to 0, and you get 0. So is 0 a maximum or minimum? Think about it and graph it, and you'll see what it uh, means or what I'm talking about. Anyway, so let's make a table. My table is going to be t, f, and f prime. Or actually, it's the other way around because I want to see f prime first so I can tell about, uh, talk about the behavior of f. And the only root, okay, so I need to set my derivative equal to 0. Obviously, t to the t cannot be 0, but if ln t is negative 1, t is equal to e to the power negative 1, which means 1 over e. So this is going to be 1 over e. And this is, I'm hoping, where the derivative changes sign. And if you look at it carefully, if t is greater than 1 over e, like let's say if t is equal to, I don't know, 1, then ln 1 is going to be 0, 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. So this is going to be positive in this region if t is greater than 1. You see that? And of course it's going to be positive here too because we didn't change regions, we didn't hit the root, so it's going to stay the same and so it's going to be negative here. I just used 1 as a test point. You can... You don't have to. You can do it differently, but that's what I like to use. Now, here's the behavior of our function. If f prime is negative on an interval, our function must be decreasing. And if it's positive, our function must be increasing. We shouldn't have two arrows. If we didn't break it down, it's the same thing. So we do have a minimum at 1 over e. Okay. So let's see what this means. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and then we'll go from there. Okay? Now. The graph of t to the power t is as follows. And as you can see here, this is the value of 1 over e where the derivative is 0. So at that point, we actually have, and you can plug it in to find what it is, 1 over e to the power 1 over e, basically, or e to the power negative 1 over e. That's the minimum point. Now notice that for this function, let's say we have y equals n to the n, right? So when n to the n is greater than 1, right, when n to the n is greater than And when does that happen, right? If n is 1, you're going to have 1, exactly, right? So y is going to be 1. If n is equal to 1 half, you're going to have something like 1 half to the power 1 half, which is the square root of 1 half, and obviously that's always going to be less than 1. So in other words, if n is greater than 1, we have a single solution, right? If n is less than 1, and of course, you can't have n less than or n to the n less than this value. So if n is less than 1 over e, then you don't get any solutions. Make sense? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.